الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره ونستعين به جل جلاله ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ به سبحانه وتعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا عباد الله أنصحكم ونفسي الآثمة بتقوى الله وأحثكم وإياها على طاعته وأحذركم وإياها وبال مخالفته جل وعلا ومعصيته وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولا شيء مثله ولا شيء قبله ولا شيء معه قديم بلا ابتداء دائم بلا انتهاء لا يفنى ولا يبيد ولا يكون إلا ما يريد لا تبلغه الأوهام ولا تدركه الأفهام ولا يشبه الأنام حي لا يموت قيوم لا ينام سبحانه لا مثل له ولا مثال له ولا مثيل له ولا مماثل له ذلك بأن ربنا جل وعلا على موصوف بصفات الوحدانية منعوت بنعوت الفردانية ليس في معناه أحد من البرية وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وعظيمنا ونبينا وشفيعنا وقرة أعيننا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره الكافرون صل اللهم وسلم وبارك وجدد وضاعف وعظم ممجد على هذا النبي الأمين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين ورضي الله عن صحابته الغر الميامين لا سيما ساداتنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة والأهل والقرابة ومن اتبعهم بإحسان وتمسك بالثقلين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد عباد الله يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في المحكم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا الآية is the beginning of سورة النساء the very first ayah in Surah Nisa, this ayah. And today I'd like to shed some light on this ayah, really bringing into light that this ayah is the constitution of human rights and humanity. Islam, as a religion, came to perfect the human. The problems with humanity since the beginning of humanity till now is the failure to rise to that human level. To be human, simply human. Simply human with our dealings. Simply human with our behavior. Simply human with our thoughts. Al Islam came to perfect the standard of humanity and to show us, to lead us the way to understand what humanity is like. This is the beginning of Surah Nisa. Of course, Al Quran Al Azim indicates many times these values and the human values but you see it in this beautiful ayah and every ayah of the Quran is beautiful. Ya ayyuhan nas Allah says Ya ayyuhan nas and nas here is Ya ayyuha is a speech towards the people Ya ayyuhan nas O human being O mankind not Ya ayyuhan ladhina amanu Ya ayyuhan nas. And there's a difference between Ya ayyuhan nas and Ya ayyuhan ladhina amanu. Ya ayyuhan ladhina amanu, only those who believe. Ya ayyuhan nas, those of you who are Muslims, those of you who are not Muslims, those of you who believe, those of you who don't believe, those of you, whoever you are, as long as you're a human being, you come, this speech is for you. This message is to you. This pertains to you, Ya ayyuhan nas. Ittaqu rabbakum. Let's stop a little bit here with Ittaqu Rabbakum. First of all, as the ayah is telling them, Ittaqu, let's say now, have taqwa of your Creator, Rabbakum, your Creator. O mankind, have taqwa of your, of your Creator. 
Uh, what is this ayah is trying to, first of all, ad ad addressing everybody, all human beings, and have taqwa of your Creator? As if the ayah is trying to tell us, all of us, all mankind, all human beings, we are all created. We are all created by the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. We had no choice of coming into this world. Did anyone ask you if you want to come into this world or not? Before you were born, someone said, do you want to go or do you want to stop? Huh? Did anyone say, uh, you think you want to have uh, this, you want to be this, you want to be that? You want to be a boy, you want to be a girl? Did anyone ask you, you want to be, uh, what, do you want to go, what do you want to look like when you grow up? Did any nobody gave you, nobody asked your permission. Now, did anybody ask you how many sisters you can have? And did anybody take your permission to see how many, who was your father and who was your mother? All these things are decisions, decisions and things are already made for you. You had no choice. We had no choice. We were born. And we were created. And the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and gave us the capacity to deal with each other based on the mere fact that we are creation meant to live. So therefore all of us together, then as of the ayah is telling us, we're all creation, we're all here, we all here came for a purpose. And this purpose, of course, read the Quran, you'll notice you see all the purpose, the purpose of the creation. But this purpose is also for us to work together as human beings. Now, ittaqu rabbakum, have taqwa of your Lord. Now, when you realize that we're all human beings, there's no difference between whether you're black or white or yellow or this or tall or short. We all come to one family and you realize we all go back to one father and one mother, Adam and Hawa alayhi salam. And we're all related in a sense then. Ittaqwa rabbakum, taqwa now. Many people indicate, say taqwa is fear of Allah. Many people say there is a, a, many other things that are narrated. What is taqwa, taqwa, taqwa? But taqwa in the overall fact is not only one thing. It's actually a multifactorial concept. That many people say, well it's a fear, having taqwa, fear of Allah. No, no, wait a minute. What, what does that mean, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? At taqwa turns out to be a comprehensive system of abiding by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the Creator's rules. That is a taqwa. A taqwa is not someone who is just simply fearing Allah means what? Means abiding by His rules subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then that indicates that you fear Him. And who fears Allah most? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Innama yakhsha Allah min ibadihi al-ulama. Those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly are those who have knowledge of Allah. Why? Because if you don't have knowledge, you cannot fear Him truly. And therefore, it's, it's sort of an equation. Huh? And in order to know who you worship, in order to know who, in order to know how to worship, you have to know who you worship. And in order for you to then perfect your worship, you have to know your Creator, Subhanahu wa Taala. Now, then what do we mean by taqwa? We mean abiding by the rules of the Creator, Subhanahu wa Taala. Why? Since we are all a creation of Allah, Subhanahu wa Taala. We are all a creation of the Creator, like we said at the beginning, no one had a chance, no one had a permission to come in or not to come in. We were all created, we were all put here, and we all have a purpose, because it would be then chaotic not to have a purpose. Abath, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not create things without a purpose. Because that would negate wisdom, al-hikmah. Al-hikmah, or wisdom, is that things have purpose. Huh? Okay, then at taqwa means since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created us, the Creator created us, then He also gave us a set of rules to live by. If we abide by these rules, that means we have taqwa. That means now we have fulfilled the conditions of happiness and prosperity. If we violate these rules, huh? don't lie, don't cheat. Don't steal, don't shed blood, don't kill people, don't back, don't gossip, don't backbite. Huh? Do good, avoid the bad. Huh? This is what Islam is. Take, take, a, take these values with you to any airport huh? and tell them here's the values of Islam. Don't tell them Islam because nowadays Islam has there's an Islamophobia. But just tell them I have these values for you. 
I have a values that you should not steal, you should not lie, you should respect each other. We value every human being because we affirm worth. Islam affirms worth to every human being, affirms dignity to every human being. This is what Islam is. Because we see every human being as worthy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this human being. Now, if these, if these values that we must adhere to, which constitute taqwa, are violated, then who is going to be loser? The creator or the creation? The creation. The creation will lose, would lose out on its happiness, would lose out on its, actually what it's supposed to do, on its fulfillment of things, and that's why it will turn unhappy. Huh? People often, because of ignorance and arrogance, two things that, that are very important that di dictate sometimes people's lives. In people's lives, you see, sometimes dictated by two things, arrogance and ignorance. And usually, ignorance leads to arrogance. Huh? Why? A human being is like a tree. Everybody, all of you have seen trees. If you see an apple tree, if the apple tree is filled with fruits, what happens to the apple tree? It bows down. But if the apple tree is empty, there's no fruits in it, what happens to it? Mal huh? Sanabel, the poet said, Mal Sanabel Tanhani, Bitawabuan, Wal Farirat or Usuhuna Shawamiku. The husks that are filled with grains, they're bowing down almost out of humility. But those who are empty, they're always like this. Don't see me on here. Huh? Arrogance and ignorance usually leads people to these things. Arrogance and ignorance may lead someone not to only defy the rules that a human must live and coexist with their fellow humans, but also defy the rules of the Creator and shatter everything that is humane and that is worthwhile. And the results indeed are grave because disasters lead to disasters. What do I mean by that? Take an example. Trying to defy someone who's very powerful, a powerful might. The Romans, let's say at that time. Can you defy the Roman Empire? What would happen if you defy the Roman Empire? Wipe, they would wipe you on the face of, from the face of the earth, right? A human, notice this, defy, they set the rules and they defy them. I'll give you this example from our history. Abu Muslim al-Khurasani. Abu Muslim al-Khurasani was a man Abu Muslim, his name is Abu Muslim, was a man who actually was the tool for establishing the Abbasi Empire. The, after the Umayyads, the Umayyad dynasty came, the Abbasi came. Abu Muslim was among the people who were actually the, the killers on the field. Soldiers on the field, the killers on the, whatever you want to call them, right? He was among the people who actually were slaughtering the Umayyads anyway they see them to establish the reign and the kingdom of the Abbasis. An instrumental tool. He was not from the Abbasi family, but he was among those who were their tools. And was very faithful, uh, integral, instrumental to that rule for a very long time. Eventually, he has been so close to all the Khulafa of Abbasi Khulafas and all this. Abu Ja'far al Mansur was the Abbasi Khalifa of the time. Abu Muslim Khurasani came and wanted to marry a woman from Bani al Abbas from the family of Abbas, he wanted to marry a woman. Abu Muslim was Mawla, he was non Arab. He was from other uh, people, from other places that came. Now, uh, Abu Ja'far al-Mansur not, was not comfortable with this. Okay, okay, fine, you served us. On your shoulders, this kingdom was established, but you dare, you rise your level, you, you are now up, you think you are worthy of marrying one of our females? Huh? He kept it for him and had these people after him. You know how some people are, their job is only to go after people. And right, this is what he said. And this is what he said. And not only that, take it out of context. Mm -hmm. He said this, but he really means this. Oh, you should see. Huh? Huh? Munafiqeen are all over the place. Now, so people are like that. Abu Ja'far al-Masul sent some people after this Abu Muslim. He left him in his job because he was his wazir, almost right hand man. He sent people after him, write down everything and you know, make it, make it rich, make the substance good, juicy. Well, years come, Abu Ja'far calls Abu Muslim, now it's too much. 
and he puts the guards behind, he hides the guards with their swords and things so Abu Muslim doesn't see them. Abu Muslim comes in and Abu Ja'far al-Mansur, the Khalifa, he starts telling him, why did you do this in that day? Why did you, no, now, now the blacklist comes, as long as we're good, all the, uh, it's like the engagement, as long as every first in the engagement everything looks good. After that now all the, all the bad things come out. So now all the bad things come out. Why did you do this that day? Why did you do this that day? Why did you do this that day? Abu Muslim al-Khurasani, he sort of figured out that there's something that's not normal. Why is he treating me this way? And he felt something's abnormal, so he starts apologizing. He apologizing, I'm sorry, oh, ya Amir Mu'in, ya Khalifa, oh this, uh, I'm sorry. And then at the end, he pushed it too much. He said, Abu Muslim, he said, okay, I resign. I, I, I'm not worthy of this. I understand. Here's my resignation. He says, no, may Allah make me resign if I make you resign. Where are you going? Where do you think you're going? You're not going to resign. It's not going to go this easy. He ordered the people, the guard, and he, they killed them. Right away, there's, there's no, uh, uh, there's no indication. He didn't give him a chance. He, right away, he killed them for defying this order, for defying something that Abu Ja'far thought was very important or something sentimental to him. And uh, he told him, "Atazgumu anna dayna la yanqadi istawfi bil kaili aba mujrimi." You, you are killing Abu, Abu Muslim. He is telling him after he killed him, he says, you killed all the Umawis and you thought this will not come back to you. This will not hunt you? Well, time is back. This will hunt you. Take this as a, as a payback for what you did. No, though he was his partner in crime. But take this for what you did. Not Abu Muslim, Abu Muslim. Father of criminal, you are a criminal, you're not no longer a Muslim. Huh? اشرب بكأس كنت أنت ساقيها أمر في الحلق من شد العلقمي. Take drink from this cup that you used to give to people, which is more bitter than bitterness itself. Huh? Shows you that sometimes when you defy someone who's not even that powerful, look what they do to you. They want to wipe you out of the face. They want to make prevent you from breathing if they can. They want to prevent you from drinking water if they can. And Islam, this ayah, the whole point of this is to take you to the ayah. First of all, Islam tells you, wait a minute. Ya ayyuhan nasu, inna khalaqnakum. Inna khalaqnakum. Ya taqullah, taqullah aladhi khalaqakum in nafsin wahida. Oh people, you have been created the same. Number one, uh, Allah is your Lord. You're all equal. What made this higher than this takes us to the second point, which tells us then, who made one above and one below? What is the standard for being high and low? What is the standard of being equivalent or not equivalent? Who are you equivalent to and why are not equivalent to the other? Who, is, who gave the right to people to enslave others like that? Might, right? And therefore, Islam does not believe in the logic of power, but believes in the, log in the power of logic. And there's a difference. And the power of logic is different than the logic of power. And therefore, Abu Ja'far al-Mansur couldn't realize this. That matters will also come, ta come, time will also come when he will also be wiped. And his dynasty will also go. But he told him, you can't do this. He killed them because simply he wanted to marry this, this, per this person. And Islam now notice this ayah, Ya Yohannas. It means that Allah created you from one soul, from one thing. You are all, all mankind, all of you mankind, whether you are powerful, whether you are weak, whether you are rich, whether you are poor, you are all the same. You all came from one, one individual, you all came from one unit, you all came from one entity. There is no differences among you, you're all the same. You all have something in common. And Islam wants us to, want to realize this so we feel the love and the kindness and the mercy to each other, regardless who we are, regardless of our differences, regardless of our ideologies and our theories, because we all come back to the same family and the same unit, and we're all people. We may be different colors and different ideologies and different thoughts and different this, but at the end of the day, we are one people, is what the ayah is trying to tell us. Huh? النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم 
the Bani Bayaba and the Ansar. Among the Ansar, there was a true uh, uh, tribe, Bani Bayaba. Abu Hind was among the Sahaba who has two things going against him. Number one, he was Mawla. He was not from a tribe. He was from, from some foreign country came. Number two, Hajjam. Hijama was his, uh, his, uh, his, his uh, profession, let's say barber, sort of, if we were to say people that used to do hijama. But also they used to cut hair and all these things. And num these two things are going against him. Why? I mean, number one, you're not from a tribe. Number two, you are a barber and you want to go and marry from the Ansar. Uh, they said, no, sorry. He, he goes to the Prophet sallallahu said, Ya Rasulullah, this is... And Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, practicing this that we're all equal, said to him, "Marry him, marry him off. What is wrong with him? Huh? Just like people nowadays, uh, the Quran and the Sunnah, dear brothers and sisters, are not simply something that existed 1427 years ago. They live today among us because nowadays we have this profession. Alhamdulillah. Uh, he has to have three PhDs, two masters, and five bachelor's degrees." Huh? Two homes and one brand new car. Furniture must be this and that. Thinking as if these tools will provide happiness. Or some people ask for high do you know, uh, mahar, dowry, uh, 300,000. 300, Foolishness thinking that this would guarantee the happiness of their daughter. But what guarantees the happiness of their daughter and what guarantees their future is not all these things, is what guarantees them is that these people have taqwa in their hearts. Even if they don't have anything at all. And that's why Habib al-A'zam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, If you have someone that you like their deen and you like their morals, they're decent, marry him off, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Hmm. Standards to go back to the book and Sunnah to see how things work. طيب. Well, the Prophet ﷺ practiced this, and by practicing this, what does this mean? It means something we live almost daily. Racism. Ya Oh people, oh mankind, everybody, all human beings, have taqwa of your creator that created you all from the same thing. There is no racism. What makes one race better than the other race? Is there anything intrinsically better in one than the other? Something in ideology, this racism is an ideology that human beings suffered for thousands of years. Well, people think we are better so we have to kill you off because our people are only the better people. My color is the best color. My face, my looking, my looks are the best looks. My ideology is the best ideology. All these things, notice. While Islam came specifically huh, to say, wait a minute, you're all, you're all equal, there's nothing different between you, there's nothing that favors you over the other except the taqwa, except who is more decent than the other. Who is better than the other, in their deeds, not intrinsically better. In their actions, in their behaviors, and their dealings with other people. Not simply intrinsically, there's nothing, there are not more super genes than others over other people. Huh? And this is something that people suffered for a long time, still suffering until today. Still suffering until that, this is this and this is that. Notice, Al-Quran came to do this. Why? Because even before Islam, people in the Jahiliyyah used to do this. The tribe of such and such cannot marry from the tribe of such and such. Some, I'm saying this because this exists today. This exists today. My tribe, my family, oh no, no, no. How can we marry from them? Oh, Jahiliyyah. People are still in Jahiliyyah. There is a new Jahiliyyah. Jahiliyyah is not just simply discontinued. It still exists. And until we perfect our human standards and we act like human beings before anything, just like a fellow human being first, that I have respect for my fellow human being regardless who he is. No? That we affirm the dignity and the worth to, to every human being. Until we get there, then we won't feel these meanings. Ya oh, So we don't say this is only for the mu'mins, la la, for everybody. Ittaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida. 
نفس واحدة one soul Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all these people all these things were created from Adam and Hawa alayhi salam and this is how this was created Adam alayhi salam and Hawa were teaching their offspring how to be good were teaching their offspring how to be productive human beings how to do to afford the good how to deny the evil etc etc something that we have gotten well what is the difference then between people? Why do people still say I'm from this and I'm from that? Notice, look at the poetry that is attributed to Amir Mumin Ali ibn Abi Talib. He says, Anasu min jihati tamthili akifau. Abuhumu Adamu walumu hawau. The people, human beings, as far as representation, they're all the same. Because their father is Adam and their mother is Hawa. La fadla. فَإِنْ كَانَ لَهُمْ حَسَبٌ يُفَاخِرُونَ بِهِ فَالطِّينُ وَالْمَاءُ If they want to be proud of anything of their origin, they should be all be proud of clay. Because they're all equal in clay, they were all made out of clay. And this is something you can be proud of. You're saying my fathers and your father, my grandfathers, this is your fathers and grandfathers were clay. Huh? لا فضل إلا لأهل العلم إنهم على الهدى لمن استهدى أجلاء. The only true value is to those who have knowledge and practice this knowledge. Not only have it and practice this knowledge, huh? Because they are guides for others who lack this guidance, huh? وقدر كل امرئ ما كان يحسنه الناس وقدر كل امرئ which means the value of every human being is what they can do best. You are a businessman, you can do best in that business. Be a decent businessman. If you're a businessman, then be an honest businessman, an effective business, a good businessman. If you're a doctor, then you become a good doctor. If you're an engineer, you become a good engineer. If you are a scholar, you become a good scholar. If you are whatever your job is in life, Islam wants you to be as good as you can, to give to humanity, not only to yourself, because you are part of this Ya Ayyuhannas. To rise, because two, two wrongs do not make it right. The usual explanation, well they do this and they do that. Two wrongs don't make it right. And again in Islam we believe if you are good to those who are good to you, then what good are you? If you're just good to those who are good to you, then that's expected of you. I mean what good are you then? You're supposed to be good to those who are not good to you. You're supposed to be forgiving to those who do not forgive you, and those who commit atrocities against you, and those who violate your rights. That doesn't mean be stupid and not fight back. Every human being has the right to defend their honor and dignity and themselves. But when it comes to forgiveness, you forgive. And I'll take you to the battle where Ali and Abi Talib was fighting this man. And all of you know the story. The reason I'm telling you this story because you all know it. And he took the sword away from him and the man was on the, on the ground and Amir al-Mu'mineen was almost going to kill him and he spat in the face of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib and Sayyidina Ali refused to kill him. Refused to kill him. He says, now it's personal. I forgive you. Go. It's, it's, not, it's not personal. When he spat on him, this was, you're trying to make it personal. This is not personal. Huh? And therefore, وَقَدْرُ كُلِّ امْرِئٍ مَا كَانَ يُحْسِنُهُ And then what, what does that mean? What, what you can do best is who you are. How you distinguish yourself in this human life. Dear brothers, today we are here, tomorrow we're gone. Our life is num our days are numbered. No matter how long you stay, you will, you will go. Change your life, take the opportunity to change it into a positive thing that you can give to your society, that you can give to your family, that you can give to the whole world. Because you are a Muslim and you're supposed to be the fountain of goodness, and the fountain of guidance, and the fountain of mercy, and the fountain of understanding. وَقَدْرُ كُلِّ امْرِئٍ مَا كَانَ يُحْسِنُهُ Then he says, People are dead, and only the people of knowledge are alive. That's the end of the poetry. Anyway, then this takes us to another concept that we talked about and we have talked about before. Since the ayah says, Ya ayyuhan nasu attaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida. Have taqwa of your Lord who created you from all of you as mankind. Notice no gender. 
both males and females, you all have been created of, from one unit. Wait a minute, this zygote that created you. Uh, if people had understood this ayah from 1400 years ago, the female gender would have avoided any kind of oppression that happened to it. And I'm not saying Muslims are the ones or are the only ones implicated in this. Islam is not, of course, Islam is setting the rules. But every single almost culture and civilization on this earth abused and they actually stripped the, the, the female gender from their rights. They degraded them. Many people in the, in the uh, mid ages of Europe and even before that, they considered them the source of evilness, the source of uh, sharr, and the source of this and the source of that. Mm, wait a minute. Al-Quran is trying to tell all of us, and I'm not saying that some Muslims are are implicated in this absolutely just because they are human beings they share these deviations from the mainstream values with other people that other mankind but al quran wants to tell us wait a minute what, is, what are you thinking this is uh, there's no difference between you and a female and a male in a sense there is no difference for khalq takwini they are both created by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are both given the rights yes there may be physiological differences yes there may be uh, functional differences but that is not to say that one is better than the other. That is not one to say that the male is smarter than the females, though the male's brain is bigger than the, than the female's brain. Physiologically speaking, medically speaking, the female, the male's uh, brain tissue is larger than the female's brain tissue. It doesn't say that there is many males that are dumber than many females, huh? huh? And as the poet said, "Walau kana nisa kama dakarna." If the females were like Fatima and Khadija, then females would be much better than males. What's the standard here? Who is better and who is not? What are you doing? What are you contributing? As, as a unit, as a human being, are you living your life like birds? How do birds live? They eat, they drink, they sleep, they get married, they have children. They work, they go get some food and then they die. Is this how we're living our lives? Yeah, it's a question. Or what are we doing about it? What are we going to do about it? How are we going to change? How is our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the Creator, to the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam will be re-established if it's severed? And that's something we have to look in ourselves every single day. أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إرغاما لمن جحد به وكفر شلون سيدنا مولانا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم خاتم الأنبياء المحتبى صل اللهم وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي وعلى آله أهل الفقه والنظر والعلم والأثر يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة as if the ayah is trying to say, since we are all, all you mankind, the meaning of the ayah, have taqwa of your Lord that created you from the same soul, from the same unit. As if it is saying, telling us, since we are all from the same family, we're all one family, we're all, we all have the same parents, we all are the same in the sense, and all of you know now the DNA project that just they just did, the scientists just did the DNA project, complete DNA project for the human being. What is the difference? What's the variation between anyone, any, any uh, human being in the world? 99.99% they're all the same. Whether you're black, white, whatever you are, 99.9, .9, you are exa exactly identically the same. That's the, that's the result of the DNA genome project that they just came up with. Go read it, see it, amazing. And everybody comes from Africa. You like it, you don't like it, you come from Africa. Okay. Now, here's the point. The ayah is sort of trying to tell us since we are all so related and we have something in common that's much more important than a difference in theory or difference in things, we should be close together. We should open up the bridges for understanding, cooperation and dialogue with each other. We should have some kind of relations with each other. Huh? Now you see few theories, especially two. The clash of civilizations and the dialogue of civilization. And you see many socialists 
And uh, philosophers are writing about this. I'll take two of them real quick here. The Fukuyama, uh, I think his name is Francis, in Johns Hopkins University, he wrote a few year, or years ago, he wrote the uh, uh, End of Man or End of History book. You probably have heard of it. And there's another one, uh, Huntington's. Uh, Samuel Huntington's, I think I believe his name was. He wrote The End of History. One says basically, Fukuyama goes and says, they're both scholars in their field. Uh, we have respect for their expertise in their field. But this is what, what he says literally. He says there's no more ideology. Fukuyama says there's no more ideology. After the Second World War, basically, basically the uh, European civilization won over, because it's clashing, won over these other ideologies. And uh, uh, also the future will be about technologies, not about ideas anymore, or not about uh, values anymore. Who's going to control this? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? All right, one, one, one view. Huntington says no. He, he draws something after post after World War One. He says the West and the rest. Mm -hmm. Notice clash of one. Why do we have clash of civilization? Why should there be a clash of civilization? Al Quran wants to tell us from this ayah. Ya yuhan nasu, ittaqoo rabbakum alladhi khalaqatum min nafsin wahida. You're all same people. There's something that unites all human beings. That you're all human beings. That's very very important. And that should actually have a cooperation among people, open dialogues among people. See what I have and see what you have. Let's have this kind of dialogue then to see, then people are free to do whatever they want. And Islam does not believe that it must dictate its own values on every single one. We don't say that here. You, you all know that in the through the times of Khilafah, uh, they were Christians and Jews and people living under the very having all rights that every citizen of that country had, except that they were relieved from paying taxes. Now, I'll take that any day. Yeah. At that time, non-Muslims living under the Islamic rule were relieved of paying taxes. You don't, you don't have to pay taxes. You, we will protect you. We will, uh, they had to pay different kind of taxes, but not the same, less than the taxes that Muslims paid. Muslims had to pay 2.5, they had to pay a little bit less, no problem. Okay. So this then should give us the, um, we have nothing to hide, dear brothers and sisters. This is who we are. But we should take a role of telling each other or ourselves first who we are and what our message is. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ we have sent you but a mercy to mankind. Notice now the ayah keeps going and says, وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً From this family unit, many, many families, many offspring was, has increased and populated earth, the meaning of the ayah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says again, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ First the ayah starts with, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تسألون به have taqwa of Allah that you claim you worship have taqwa of the creator that you claim you belong to have something don't say I'm a Muslim and or I'm a good believer and go do all kinds of things have established an internal monitoring system inside of you Huh? Sa'ad uh, ibn Rabah, Afwan, Sahal ibn Abdullah uh, Tushtari, Sahal ibn Abdullah Tushtari, Afwan, Sahal ibn Abdullah Tushtari, among the people who were in the pious predecessors, Salaf al Salih, he used to sort of have his own accountability every night. How many things I did wrong today? One, two, three, I did this wrong, I did this wrong, I did this wrong. Okay, tomorrow I won't do them again. Let's have an internal system. The second at what taqwa Allah alladhi tasaluna bih. Have taqwa of Allah that you will be you will be judged, you'll be asked. Wal arham and those that you have relations to. Have taqwa of Allah and those that you are related to. Who are you related to? The entire humanity really is, is your relation. Because everyone, kullukum li Adam, wa Adamu min turab. All of you go back to Adam. And Adam is from soil, is from clay. This is who we are. And this is uh, the end of the ayah. Inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba. And then Allah is observe, Allah is watching you, Allah is seeing you, Allah knows what you're doing.
What is this? the end of the ayah wants to tell us? It wants to tell us that we should also have muraqabah. Allah is watching us, yes. But are you observing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah sees you, but are you then observant of what Allah wants from you? When we don't do the right things, are we observant that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do the right things? When we don't do the good things, are we observant that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do the good deeds? Are we observant? Is there muraqaba? Is there observance in our hearts? Because if the heart is empty of observance, then it's almost worthless. Huh? In the body, the Prophet says, one thing, if it's good, everything will be good. If it's bad, then things will be bad. bad. And this is the heart. And I mean by the heart, the core of a human being. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me and you to raise our understanding, to see who we are and to realize our function in this human family so we can give to ourselves and then we can give to others. So we can be productive like we used to be. So we can be good to everybody and have only decency to give people and we have to start from ourselves we cannot offer kindness and mercy to other people when we don't have it amongst ourselves Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ali Ibrahim barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ali Ibrahim fil alamin innaka hamidum majid اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين أعلي مولانا كلمة الحق والدين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه إليه من أراد بهم غير ذلك فاجعل دائرة السوء عليه اللهم رد المسلمين إلى دينك ردا جميلا آتي أنفسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها في اللهم مرضانا وعاف مبتلانا وفك أسرانا وارحم موتانا في اللهم لنا ولآبائنا ولمشايخنا ولمن له حق علينا ولمن على الخير عاننا ولمن عن الشر يبعدنا ولمن أوصانا بالدعاء وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وآله أقم الصلاة I'm going to go on. 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 I'm going